America, one thing about America, they love to talk about stuff. They said, let's talk about it. You talk about it, you get it out, you get it out. But when it comes to the black, enslaved and black people, they say, shut up, be quiet. Don't talk about it because blacks, we are America's dirty little secret, as, as Dr. Claude Anderson said. And America don't want to deal with the whole question of the reparation repair and the damage. Here we have a black president. We have Congressman Conyers, who's over the Judiciary Committee. And we can't even get H.R. 40 out just for a first study of slavery. Something is wrong with that. When we talk about unemployment, Dr. Malvo, there's a reason why black unemployment, other than racism and systematically what they've done to us, is so high. It's because the government and black people hire more black people than anybody. If you don't have businesses, you can't hire black people. When you look at our community, our communities are being gentrified. People are being spread out all over the place to keep moving. But you be quiet. You don't talk about the fact that your, your schools, uh, in, this, in the city of Chicago, they, go, they gave the Latino community $98 million to build a school. They closed black schools in the city of Chicago. But don't talk about it. The President of the United States have a Department of Education for Hispanics. We need a Department of Education for black people, too. I'm not knocking them. And he has someone over that. When he talks about urban affairs, when most of your urban cities, Detroit, Gary, Chicago, Ohio, Philadelphia, are black people, he put a Latina, Hispanic over that, never even put a black, just to balance that off. Do we not supposed to talk about that? Now, I don't get mad about the Tea Party. They're doing what they're supposed to do. We're supposed to do what we're supposed to do. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it in love. In love. In love. With the moral er, er, authority. Everybody, everybody say in love. In say it love. again. In love. One more again. Go on, Sister Dorothy. Now, we lose that moral authority, Reverend Jackson. You know, we both come from Dr. King. Dr. King brought me to Chicago. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. Grew up in the struggle. I don't understand. I don't get to be 62 years old with scars on my body from being on, on, on Edmund Pettus Bridge fighting for the rights of black folks and be quiet when black folks are being oppressed today. Oh. No way. That's right. That's right. Dr. King said that if you don't deal with truth, you lose the moral authority. Blacks can never afford to lose the moral authority in this United States of America. If you lose it, you lose. Now, the truth of the matter is, and people get, they call my show, President Obama is not addressing the black agenda. President Obama has been told that it's all right not to address our agenda. Right. Yeah. Who, who told him that? So if you don't address them, don't worry about it, because they're going to be quiet. That's right. when, when you say he's been told that, who told him that? Ah, uh, he's been told by the little birds in his ears. <laughs> <laughs> Because we are so happy to have a black face in the White House that we have to get back in our place where they had us before. Now, let me tell you, I refuse, and I teach my children, and for the youth who's out there watching today, I grew up in the Civil Rights Movement, and it's been young people who have really moved this movement. And if we don't stand and be strong, we cannot make our young people cowards by being quiet. We just can't do that. It is not about anybody around this table, Tavis. It's not about us. It is about our future. It is about our children. It is about our communities. We live in what you call representative government. Now, what makes me upset is that we work and put black folks in office, and they say, I can't deal with that. I 
can't deal with that, that's too black. Now everybody thinks that something is wrong with you. Don't you know that everybody in this country and in the world expected the president to deal with the black agenda? The Irishmen deal with the agenda, the Italians deal with their agenda, the, the Latina deal with their agenda. That's just natural. When Harold Washington was mayor, Harold Washington say, because I love black folks don't mean I hate anybody else. Right. That's right. Dorothy Tillman, Chicago's own. And the church said, let me go. Please welcome from the University of Maryland, Ron Walters, right. Professor Ron Walters. I'm coming, I'm coming to you right quick, Dr. Walters, because with all that Dorothy Wright Tillman said that obviously electrified and excited this audience, if Barack Obama, our president, were here today, he would tell us, if he was seated at this table, that with all due respect to his friend Dorothy Wright Tilburn, he cannot write legislation that has the word black in it. No matter what he may want to do, no matter what his instincts may do, may be, you know full well um, that I cannot, Professor Walters, Obama would say to you, I can't write legislation that considers specifically black folk. Name for me, Professor Walters, you teach this stuff, Obama would say to you, give me one piece of legislation has ever been written with the name black in it, you know the process doesn't work that way. And you would say? I would say the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Because uh, there's something in that act <clears throat> called the protected classes. And African Americans are part of the protected classes. Women um, and other people from nationalities, uh, people that have been disabled are part of the protected classes. So that in that sense, yes, uh, some legislation has had us in it as part of the protected class. The 1965 Voting Rights Act uh, has had a lot of people in there as a protected classes, that you cannot deny these people the right to vote. So that in one sense, yes, we have been named. In a more fundamental sense, we have not been named. Exactly. For example, if you look at the post-Civil War amendments, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, one of the most important things about those amendments was that even though they were aimed at drawing us closer to citizenship, what they also did in each one of them, there is a line which says, and Congress shall have the power. In each one of them. They were aiming at us, but they gave Congress the power to protect our rights. In doing that, they ceded, they shifted the balance of power in the whole system toward the Congress. You remember before that, there had been a discussion, a debate, about whether or not states' rights would really be the paradigm of this country, or whether or not you would have a strong central government. In dealing with our problem, it shifted the balance of power so that the central government then could be the protector of our rights. And that has followed us all the way down through. And let me say that I was so captivated by what my sister said <laughs> that, yeah, that we have a tea party, we have a coffee party. What we need is a black party. We need a black party. Now, some of us have been talking about this for a long time. But I think that what we are discussing here, really, is power. Now, I, I'm, I'm coming from the National Conference of Black Political Scientists Convention. It is meeting at this moment and discussing these issues, and we have been discussing them for 40 years. One of the things we know is that no president runs the political system. That's right. No president runs the political system. No president runs the economic system. No president. He may be able to influence it here and there, but they don't run it. That's right. That's right. So 